So The Kitchen House is a book that has a very strong focus on racial issues um, and boundaries and uh, does a really great job at thinking about perspective based on color, or sorry, privilege based and I guess perspective on color um, and how it affects an individual. Uh, the book is about a plantation um, in Virginia just before the Civil War. Um, and there are very lot, there's a lot of dark secrets um, that threaten to expose the individual's uh, best and worst sides within anyone who's linked to it. So uh, Lavinia is a girl who's sent, has no family, um, is orphaned, uh, is coming from Ireland, and she's sent to this... Um, kitchen house where the family takes her in but keeps her in the kitchen house so there's this building that exists that has all the servants and slaves that work in it and they're all um black individuals and then on the other side is the big house where um this privileged family exists so even though Lavinia is white, uh, she is sent to the kitchen house with the black slaves. She learns how to cook, how to clean, um, how to serve food, everything that they uh, do, and really is adopted into this family within the kitchen house. But she's living between two worlds. And um, although she's within the kitchen house, she's still separated because of her skin color. Um... And also never fully accepted within uh, the big house because she's an orphan and she has become one of their slaves. So this book's really interesting because it it has to do with heartbreak, but it's also very uh, hopeful. Um, Belle is one of the... It's the master's... Um, how would you say it? Like his... I guess, illegitimate daughter because he slept with one of the slaves. She got pregnant and had this baby. So she's kind of favored, st but still within the kitchen house. Um, and Lavinia builds a strong friendship with her. There's, the characters in this are really real strong characters. This is definitely will pull out your heartstrings. Um, there's a lot of things that just make your gut like, I'm, I, I want to punch something or I want to cry. Um, it's, it has to do a lot with race and family secrets and relationships and the idea of accepting and wanting to belong. Um, very much like, the help in that it puts together um, an argument and pushes it to make social change and make um, activists out of us. And it makes us, it brings us to the decision of what we should do and how we should do it to change um, what's going on in this kind of segregation that's happening then but also still happening now. Um, so I'll read you a little bit about it. So this is 1810. There was a strong smell of smoke and new fear fueled me. Now on the familiar path, I raced ahead, unmindful of my daughter behind me, trying to keep up. My legs were numbed, unused to the speed, and my lungs felt as though they were scorched. I forbade myself to think I was too late and focused my strength on moving toward home. Foolishly, I misjudged and meaning to take a shortcut to the stream, I swerved from the path to dash from the trees. To my horror, I found myself trapped. I pulled to free my long blue skirts from the blueberry branches that ensnarled me. As I ripped my way out, Ellie caught up to me. 
She attached herself to my arm, sobbing and trying to hold me back. Though a seven-year-old is no match for a grown woman, she fought fiercely, with strength fostered by her own, ter her own terror. In my frenzy, I pushed her to the ground. She stared at me with disbelieving eyes. Stay here, I begged, and raced back down the path until I reached the stream. I meant to cross over by stepping on the rocks in the shallow water, but I didn't remove my shoes, which was a mistake. Halfway over, I slipped on the river stones, and with a splash, I fell. The cold water shocked me, and for a moment, I sat stunned, water bubbling by until I looked up and recognized our smokehouse on the other side of the stream. The gray building reminded me that I was close to home. I rose, my skirt soaked and heavy, and scrambled my way across the, rip the water, clinging to the jutting rocks. At the base of the hill, I leaned forward to breathe, grasping for air. Somehow, Ellie had reached my side again, and this time she clung like a kitten to my wet skirts. I was terrified of what she might see, but it was too late now, so I grasped her hand, and together we crested the bluff. There... I froze. Ellie saw it too and whimpered. Her hand slipped from mine as she sat on the ground. I moved forward slowly as though in a dream. Our massive oak tree stood at the top of the hill. Its lush green leaves <coughs> shading the, sh the thick branch that bore the weight of the hanging body. I refused to look up again after I caught sight of the green headscarf and the handmade shoes that pointed down. So again, really emotional book, um, but so worth the read.